oh, we're definitely going to get into the protein and fruit myth-ish. Well, I'm going to clarify. Let's get into it. This fruit issue is driving me freaking bananas. No, bonkers. I'm having more and more people in consultations just dump fruit to their carnivore diet, which to me is illogical. But that's not all. They become super addicted to sugar, which defeats the purpose of trying to get into ketosis or trying to help any of your metabolic damage or inflexibility because now you have all that fructose in the system. But the problem is it goes to your liver. Your liver's already bogged down, my people. You're adding fruit, goes to the liver, and it fills up quickly. Fills up in the cells very quickly. Glycogen storages are full. Boom! You convert that fructose into triglycerides. That's fat. And if you keep doing that, you can get a fatty liver. But a lot of that, if you're glycogen storages are full. These triglycerides can be liberated into the bloodstream and go to the fat cells. And then you get fat on fruit. Be careful, people. Eating fruit will block the ability to keto adopt. You can't make ketones with all that fructose in your liver. Cannot. Don't get all freaking twisted and bounded up because I said fruit can cater to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Most people will not experience this, but there are a select few who already have a bogged down liver. And then when you add all that fruit, it is a cluster fluck of a bomb waiting to explode in those types of people. You don't understand that fruit can turn into triglycerides. And if you've got an issue with triglycerides, with liver function, biliary duct system, it's a mess, especially if you have high uric acid or urea. Be careful. Y'all must be so confused because you don't understand that fruit can actually make your liver thick and fatty. And you can develop fatty, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease by eating all that fruit on carnivore. So be very careful. The reason why I call my channel humble is because my sole purpose is to make sure that you guys are not injuring yourself. Why would I do a channel that's a constant warning it's very unpopular. I could just teach you guys how to get all your electrolytes from meat, fast 5,000 hours a day, gaze at the sun, uh, follow my weight loss program, and you could be just like me when you reach 56. But who the frack wants that? Years ago when I started coaching people, I ran across a woman. I coached her. Everything was fine. But then her husband did the same program that I put together for her and his electrolytes tanked so bad he had to go to the hospital. Well, that scared the bejesus out of me. And ever since, I've never looked back. Be careful, be careful, and be careful. Not one diet fits all. Come on, my people. It doesn't matter how someone else did on a diet or it doesn't matter how good a guru looks. It really comes down to the individual and it comes down to the amount of damage that you've accumulated over time. For example, your blood sugar. You could be insulin resistant from skipping meals, eating high carbohydrate meals, stress, pharmacological interventions. There's a million ways your blood sugar goes from this as a child to this. When it does that, you age and you feel tired and you feel crappy. People discovered carnivore. Well, first they discovered keto and then that made sense. And then that sort of worked and then it didn't work kind of like Atkins, but then people found carnivore and this is the rage and it's going to crash and burn just like keto did because a lot of gurus out there will promise you the sun, the moon, the stars, and y'all become addicted to this stuff. That's why I'm not popular. But I'm humble because I'm not trying to be popular. I want you guys to be healthy. Like I have achieved this goal of being healthy. I've had so many aha moments. 
Let's get into the fruit conversation. Where to start? Now, I did a review of Paul once and then again when he debated softly weak as frack. Anthony Shafee. But I'm not trying to dig into people because I don't care. What I care about is that you guys learn the whole story. Not their story. Not my story. But a bigger picture. Fructose. So Paul decided to eat fruit. And then he's going on about how watermelon could be the life-saving, healthy um, fruit out there. But what you don't know is how much watermelon has been genetically modified. What you see in the market is not what actually grows in nature. Fruits today have so much fructose, it's terrifying. Fruit today has so much fructose because of the modification of it. In nature, fruit would not be very sweet because bugs and insects would obliterate the crops without pesticides. You have to think again, what does the body actually need? Are we living in a tropical? Is our lineage, our DNA coming from a tropical environment? No. Fruits are sweet right when they're about to die and hit the ground so they can germinate. Otherwise, the amount of fructose and sugar that you're getting from these Frankenstein fruits is scary because a lot of you have a low functioning liver or it's on the cusp of being slightly low it should never be slightly low no your liver enzymes your alt and your ast should be in a nice healthy range your liver enzymes should not be high and a lot of you guys are on the borderline of being too high it's kind of like the same thing with your kidney function that you're on the borderline of being too low and you'll go to the doctor and they'll say oh you're in a healthy range and then you walk off thinking you're fine and then you develop health issues like sores on your feet because some doctor, some urologist told you that your GFR, your kidney filtration was fine when it really was not. Fruit goes to the liver. Listen, my people, fruit goes to the liver, not like sugar. Sugar goes to the blood. Fruit goes to an already bogged down liver from heavy metals and toxins and pesticides and freaking forever chemicals or whatever has to go through the liver and then you add on that super sugary fructose I don't know how people decided to add fruit on a carnivore diet I get it carnivore is an is a great elimination diet like I've expressed many times if you're having inflammation and food is plants are catering to this inflammation than doing an all meat grass fed and I know some of you can't afford it but the reality is that a grass fed pastured healthy animal is going to help you exponentially if you have inflammation for the short term someone like Paul Saladino his electrolytes tank so bad perhaps he jumped into carnivore too quickly and preached about it too quickly and didn't understand his body's ability to not only present magnesium, let's say in the blood, but have it go into the cells. I don't know how many clients that I have that test normal on potassium, sodium, or magnesium, but they have muscle cramps and they can't figure it out because they did a blood test and their magnesium looks normal because that magnesium might not be getting into the cells to be used. So people turn towards the fruit on carnivore. And then you might have a fructose issue with the liver or a fructose intolerance and you have a histamine reaction or your hypoglycemia goes berserko on fruit. You cannot store enough energy or glycogen in muscle from fruit. So your body has to go into the body factory, crank out the stress hormone cortisol in excess and you're wondering why you're having problems with DHEA or other things like your skin or your energy or your thyroid. Fruit's not gonna be the answer if you're doing a carnivore diet. Eating high fat is the answer. So you train your body to get into ketosis by having moderate to low protein and upping your fat. But 
that doesn't happen overnight to ketosis. People are always saying, I'm fat adapted. I have 0 0.5 on my ketone monitor. And I'm like, no, no, anyone can make ketones. That doesn't mean you use them or it doesn't mean that you're making enough of them. And then on top of that, you have to watch your blood sugar. So Paul is not in ketosis. And you heard Sean, I am not trying to, I haven't tried to be in ketosis, but now I'm upping my fat to try to deal with inflammation. For me, why would you do it just for the short term? You would do it all the time if it's going to help your brain and your reproductive hormones and your skin and use ketones. Why try to use protein as a good source of energy when it's the worst? And then fructose is, fructose is also very short term. It's like putting paper into a wood stove, burning high and then burning out. If you're already having issues with your blood sugar, then fruit is the worst thing to do. Perhaps some of these gurus will do a fruit added to a carnivore diet and they'll feel better in terms of, in terms of their electrolytes, like heart palps and things, but their energy tanks. But they don't talk about it, so they eat more and more fruit. Ketosis. If your gallbladder is functioning fine, amazing, then ketosis is going to help save your cells. When you eat a lot of fructose, which enters the blood as sugar, the cells don't do well with fructose. It turns into fat within the cells and excess if you don't have a metabolism that can get rid of and burn off that high blood sugar. What happens is advanced glycation end product. The protein lining of the cell becomes damaged with too high fruit. You can't make this stuff up. So not only do we have to deal with the liver enzymes and the blood sugar and gaining weight on fruit or crashing and developing hypoglycemia, but we got to deal with advanced glycation or glycation, glycating of the cells. And that pretty much means disease and aging. I know fruit today is genetically altered. Almost all of it is should be bitter like a sour candy and it's best when it's almost about to drop to the ground and be mushy and if you moldy. have a candida overgrowth you better run forest run from some fruit because those candida albicans spores are going to explode in your body and then your brain foggy you fall off the wagon you crave more sugar or sometimes just eating fruit alone makes you crave actual sugar and carbs I recommend that if you can't stabilize your blood sugar and you have a gallbladder issue and you can't stick to a well-formulated ketogenic protocol, don't run towards the fruit. Do a low glycemic starch and start with low carb, high fat, sweet potato, parsnip, red potato. These low starch vegetables are much better at stabilizing your blood sugar with a little bit of fat and protein best diet is a ketogenic diet, but it has to be well formulated to fit your entire day. Not the individual, not the diet alone, not the macros, but you, your existing health, your existing lifestyle. If you work late at night, if you work out late, if you are cortisol driven, if you've been through a traumatic event, perhaps keto right now may not be the right choice. I'm here to help. That's what I do. And I love it. I love learning things and then teaching you guys because when you figure it out, you feel amazing. If you want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com and book a consultation. You can also join my course page where I cover all three diets because not everybody can do keto and not everybody can do carnivore. And sometimes you might have to start with low starch and then graduate yourself once you fix that gut. Yes, the challenge I've been talking about it for months. I know the challenge I've been talking about for months, I have been dealing with contractors, my mom, her health, uh, my course, my consultation. So it's been sort of dragged out, but when I release it, when I release the signups, it's going to be amazing. It's something I'll be proud of and I'm out. Oh yeah. Stephanie Ketogenic on my Instagram, Stephanie, the business 
person on my Facebook fan page. I'm 56. Soon on my way to be 57, even though I just turned 56. But it feels amazing to learn, to unlock life beyond aesthetics, unlock youth, and hunger for life, and the appreciation for life. Yeah, it's pretty damn cool. And I'm out.